Carlos is the founder and CEO of the organization Starts Within, our nonprofit organization that combats the recidivism rate that's going on here in the state. As a direct result of his personal experience, Starts Within organization was formed. At the age of 13, Carlos got involved in the drug trade business, which led to a 10-year prison sentence at Marion Correctional Institute. During his sentence, he was able to complete his business management degree with a 3.85 GPA. The discipline, leadership, and dedication that it took for him to complete the academic program helped him realize the positive role model that he had become for his sons and his community. He decided that when he completed his sentence, he would dedicate his life to mentoring men and families struggling to break the cycle of bondage and institutionalism. Um, with that, allow me to introduce Carlos and have him further share what he does. Thanks, Marcus. I, I feel kind of special. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my name is Carlos Christian, and, and that's why I'm, I'm the founder and also the president of the Starts Within organization. That's what we do. We go inside of the penitentiaries, and we work with the guys 52 weeks before they get released from prison, and then we also work with them 52 weeks after they get released from prison. We also work with the significant other that's connected to the men, at, at, and we also work with the children as well that is connected to the men. So we work with the whole entire family to try to make sure that we reduce the recidivism rate. Now, when I say reduce the recidivism rate, I'm not talking about just reducing it for a for, uh, reason just for somebody just sitting on the couch and just not going back to jail and not getting in trouble. I'm talking about them being productive and them being a part of their community and them making their community better. So then this is the vision of Starts Within, to really enrich the, the quality of life for these men that are incarcerated <coughs> and when they come home, returning back into their communities. We believe that they are assets. How do you decrease the recidivism rate? You increase the value in the minds of those that are incarcerated. Their value is already there. You increase the value in their minds. They got to think that they are valuable. And that most, most of the times, that is the problem, is that so many times they have been told that they can't do, that they are this, that they are just a convict, that they are just an inmate, that they are just a deadbeat dad, and whatever may be the case. And they act out those, those assumptions of them. So what we do is we help them increase the value inside of their minds with information. We cover five different areas. We cover parenting, financial literacy, cognitive behavior therapy, small business entrepreneurship, and also employment readiness. Employment readiness being the longest. Employment readiness is for 16 weeks. All of the rest of the classes is for eight weeks. We demand that these guys come to class once a week, on time, and pay attention and, and participate in class. And also be ready for pop quizzes, midterms, and also final exams. Starts within organization. Before change can be seen externally, change must be done internally. We came to this, like Marcus was saying, I had 13 years old, I was 13 years old and I got involved into the drug trade and I started selling drugs and things like that. But me selling drugs is not what made me an entrepreneur. I was serious about selling drugs. I wanted to sell drugs and turn that over into a legitimate business and then help provide jobs for my community. So that's what I thought about selling drugs when I was selling drugs. So I just felt like that I picked the wrong product because that product landed me 10 years in, in prison and away from my children. So now I, 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 got into, I got into the penitentiary and I said, you know what, I need to change the way that things are going. I need to change the way that things are because this is not what I planned for it to be. So I started to think in my mind, how do I put myself in a different situation? So I started to change. I started to seek information. The first place that I started was the Bible. So I got that scripture in me, and then I started to build on who I was as a man. So I built me as a man, so then I, I, I can go in the direction that I needed to go. So I, I bettered myself. I couldn't, have, I couldn't have stayed out for as long as I have. I've been out for seven years. I have custody of my children. 
I have a house and things like that. So I couldn't have done that without doing the change that needed to be done within. It starts within. You can't wait until you come home to try to change it. It'll be too late and you'll be back in within a year. So now it's just like I had to figure out, you know, at the end of the day, I knew that I, I wanted to, you know, run my business. I just didn't know what exactly that I was going to do, but I knew that I wasn't coming back to prison. I knew I wasn't going back to prison. So I just had to figure out what am I going to do. To be an entrepreneur inside of the prison, I used to see everybody come in and they used to tell me, and we were talking about entrepreneurialism or ex-offenders, right? Right? Yes. Right. Okay. So it's like, so how do you get that 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 ex-offender to feel like, you know what, he can be an entrepreneur? I used to see people coming in and they used to tell me, yeah, Carlos, you can own your business and things like that. I had to know it inside of myself. But they didn't say all of the things that it takes to owning a business and running a business. It takes hard work. So right now, what I tell them now is like, look, hey, I'm working third shift and I'm doing starts within. I don't just do starts within. I don't just sit up here and just say, you know what, hey, I got to wait until it takes off to where it needs to take off. But in the meantime, I still need to provide for my family. I still need to pay my mortgage. That's the part that they don't understand. So when they come home and then they see, you know what, I'm going to start my business. And then they come home and they don't have the proper funding for their business, they get discouraged and then they go back into doing what they know. Give them the Oh, sorry. Is there some water? Thank you. Give them the information that they, that, that they need to know to be successful. It's the information. It's information. If they don't have the information, then they cannot be successful. Because they're going to get the wrong information. If they get the wrong information, then that's what's going to lead them and, and get them to be discouraged and they're going to recidivate. If we are thinking about the ex-offender and how can we make the ex-offender be an asset in our community, then we have to properly educate the, the ex-offender. If we don't properly educate the ex-offender, then there's no way that all of the goals that we have for them is going to be successful. We can create a whole bunch of different things and, and give it to them, but if they don't change the way that they think with inside of their mentality, inside of their minds, all of that stuff is going to be for naught. And, 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 what you, and what we will be doing is squandering resources. And me, as an entrepreneur, I don't like to squander resources. I like to make my resources go as far as they can go. So what do we do? Yes, I am. To answer the question? Yeah. Well, I know for a fact one of the biggest things we have to do is, as you said, we have to change the thought process of the individuals involved. Without changing the thought process, we don't change the behavior. And it's clearly got to be understood that the process has to start within. Because coming out, the transition, you run into too many confusing things, too many confusing elements. Like you took the time to of the thought process that gave you the path or the guidance that you were going to follow once you got out. A lot of them don't understand the seriousness of all the discipline that's in. Yes. That's a plan. Yes. You ask them to execute a plan. Okay, we can all put a plan together <coughs> when it comes time to executing that plan. That's what we find difficult. And for an ex felon the first time they run into a difficult situation and that door is slammed in their face, they go back to that impaired thinking. And that impaired thinking, well, we know that. It leads you back to your, 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 your situation that you just left from. And, and, and that's one of the biggest things is that we have to, we have to change the way that, that, that we think. And the best way that we change the way that, do, that, that they think is that you know, you give them the information, but it's just not just the information from the books. They also have to see somebody who has been successful. It's conditioned in the mind. So when they see me come inside of the penitentiary every week, along with the professionals that come in, because the people who facilitate the Starts Within organization is professionals. It's, it's a guy from Huntington Bank. He's a senior compliance analyst with Huntington Bank. And he facilitates the financial literacy, the establishing credit, repairing credit, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and how to make those investments. 
He also, we also pull their credit reports, and we look at their credit reports before they get home and find out that, that Aunt Brenda has been opening up accounts in their name, and they have not been paying on their accounts, and their accounts is delinquent. So what we do is we say, you know what, let's dispute this right now because we have information that you have been incarcerated for the past four or five years, and there's no way that you can have opened up any type of account in DirecTV or AT&T because you have been incarcerated. So what do we do? We utilize the time that they are there. I tell them first and foremost that your most valuable asset is time. Time, you cannot get it back. Once time is gone, it's gone. You cannot get it back. You can get back everything else. And I know that personally because you can get back your car, you can get back your house, you can get back even your girlfriend if she left you with a little bit more time. <laughs> time to show that you're right and you're doing good or whatever may be the case. But, but time, you cannot get it back. You can't buy it back. You can't. So you utilize your time for what it needs to be utilized for, and that's to be productive. Either you're preparing for an opportunity or you're capitalizing on an opportunity. They need to understand that. So if that's the first thing in business is understanding time and the importance of time. If you squander time, then you squander your resources, because that's your most valuable resources. That's your most valuable resource is time. And guess what they have? Time. They have a lot of time. So once they start getting into the mindset, like, you know what, hey, I'm going to utilize my time what I need to utilize my time for. I'm about to go ahead and get into college. I'm about to go ahead and learn this and learn that. And then they become valuable. And once they become valuable, then guess what? Now you can start to create a business because Anything that somebody sees value in, then they will pay for what they see value in. We got an adjunct professor. He's with the University of Cincinnati. He does he does sixteen weeks of of he does sixteen weeks of employment readiness and eight weeks of small business and entrepreneurship. He uses the same curriculum that he teaches to his students at college. These gentlemen are getting this information and they are saying, you know what, hey, I am getting equipped with different information than what I have been given in the past because in my past, only type of information that I have been given is how to sell drugs and how to do this. But, not, but, but, but with that information, if they take that and switch it and redirect their aim, now you have a success. Now you have a walking logo. And that's me. From the left hand side, that's me. The right hand side, that's me. 355519, five, five, that's, that's the number I did 10 years on. I did 10 years in prison from 19 to 29 years old. I made the transformation to the guy over here. And I, and I let them know that life is good over here because I have my children. I can watch my son, my five year old grow up. I can see him take his first steps. I can see him talk. My, my 10 year, my, when I came home, my son was 10 years old. My, my oldest son was 10 years old. I'm going to get you in one second. My oldest son was, was 10 years old, so when I came home, it was like, man, what is this? I missed, I seen it in segments. He was a baby, then he comes back, now he's talking. Now he's not, I don't know, now, then the next time he's at, then the next time he's multiplying over the 10 years. So I let them know, it's like, how do you get them to change? Is you show them something that they can relate to, something that they, they can inspire them. You can't change your mind if, they, if, if, if they're not inspired. I'm sorry. <laughs> they have to be inspired. It's conditioning of the mind. It's not just information alone. The information. Excuse me. It's not just book information. It's also information showing them that they can be who they can be. Like when they see me coming inside, that's a part of condition in the mind to accomplish our goal. Reduce the recidivism rate. Increase the value in the minds of those that are incarcerated. Also increase the value in the minds of those that are in society. If those in society are looking at us at us who are incarcerated as somebody who can be an asset and somebody who's going to come home and raise their children up in the right way, then guess what you have then? You have society looking at those individuals saying, you know what, hey, we need to invest a little bit more into that individual because that individual is critical in the development of our nation. 
Because if my child isn't like he's supposed to be, then guess what is going? To, what, guess what's going to happen? He's going to grow up and he's going to be a terror in the nation as well, just like I was. Because he has no direction. He can't get direction from somebody who doesn't have direction. It's like trying to go to uh, Barnes and Noble and asking for a cheeseburger. You're not going to get it. So entrepreneur. To be an entrepreneur as, a, as an ex-offender, they have to understand that it's, that it's resistance, it's going to be roadblocks. How do you overcome, how, how do you overcome those roadblocks? You use the same tenacity that you had when you was on the streets. Okay, I'm gonna talk for real with y'all, okay? You use the same tenacity that you had when you was on the streets. When I was on the streets, when I was that man on the left-hand side, I was the guy that was on the block all day and night, and I made sure that I sold my drugs until there was no more drugs left. I made sure that anybody who was trying to take my drugs or steal my drugs, I had repercussions for them. This is reality. So you use the same tenacity that you had in the streets, and you just redirect your aim. I tell them, look, you just got the wrong product. The mentality, you was determined. It's just that you picked the wrong product that was going to land you in prison for 10 years or get killed. Like, that's the end result. It's information. They need information. What's my time, Marvin? Um, you're OK. <laughs> um, my name is Janice. I work at DCI Women Prison. First of all, why you haven't been out there? I don't know, but we would love to have you. These you women, just let me know. I, I will. We have a graduation that's coming up in July. I would love for you to speak. Okay. I mean, I'll be here. listening to you speak right now. I mean, that would empower them a lot. I mean, I'm trying to do different things to to increase. You know their knowledge and to get them prepared for when they leave. And just by listening to you right now, I think that's exactly what they need to hear. I mean, just coming from a gentleman, more so, because there's a lot of women there, just hearing it from a man point of view, I think it would, they would look at it a lot differently and be more empowered with it. I mean, you put me in a place and I'm there. You okay. give me ears and I'll speak. Okay. Thank you. And I'm serious. Do you have a business card or anything? Yes, I do. I'll get that to you. Oh, okay. okay. I, I'll get that to okay. you. I'll get that to you. Thank you. So I will be in touch. I definitely, most definitely. So then that's what we're doing. And also with the, with the father factor, um, I'm also partnering with Action for Children, partnering with Action for Children to accomplish, to help accomplish this mission. They are a nationally recognized organization. And what we do with them is, is they help us facilitate the father factor. So we use the father factor curriculum to teach the eight weeks of parenting. So I facilitate the father factor in three different institutions. In Marion, we are graduating our first class, May 9th, and those are the guys that have been through the whole entire year. So we graduate in the first class, and then they'll be returning to our communities in about uh, three to four months. Training development as, as far as approaching the, the partner that's associated, you talking about the significant other? The significant other. Yes. yes, yes. One thing that we do is we get them to see the importance of them being on the same page as the as the person who's incarcerated and the need for them to have the information on how to deal with the person who's incarcerated. We we get them to understand what is the goal. The main goal is saying that, you know what, I want to have my partner here. I don't want my partner to be in the prison, in, in the penitentiary. So then we get them to understand that, well, for that to happen, we need to have both of y'all on the same page. And when I say both of y'all on the same page, it's like saying that if one of them is talking about buying a house, the other one should be talking about buying a house. It shouldn't be one saying, man, you know what, it's more better to, to rent than it is to own. Both of them should be saying, man, you know what, it makes sense to to buy a house because you got to pay for where you lay anyway. So why not buy a house instead of just letting your money just go and just waste your money with, with renting? So it's just so I mean so we get them both on the same page. That's that's a part of getting the, the significant other to participate in the movement with the Gazelle Project. That's the name of, of the of the part with the woman. It's called the Gazelle Project, and for the children, it's called the Phoenix the Phoenix Project. 
where we work with, with self-esteem and also hygiene and things like that with the children. And we also have tutoring for them too as well for the ones with, with, with low reading levels because they say that they build penitentiaries based on a fourth grader's reading level because they say that if their reading level isn't where it needs to be, then that means that they're going to start to act up in school. And if they start to act up in school, that strips their options. If it strips their options, then that means that they will be looking at other options and those options are in the streets and then they'll commit crimes and they'll be in a penitentiary. So we are going at it from all different types of angles and try to get it accomplished to where there is no more penitentiaries. Another trait of an entrepreneur, feel like anything is possible. No matter what you faced up against, I believe that it can be done. People say why, I say why not. Everybody isn't an entrepreneur, everybody isn't a leader. So we just get those guys just to make a choice what you want to do. And, 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 and that's the main thing is like getting them to understand who they are who they are. Everybody don't want to be a leader. Everybody don't want to be an entrepreneur. Some people want to follow. And it's not bad to follow. That's what I tell them. Even a leader has to follow. He has to follow something, somebody. Me, I say God, but. That's a good choice. It's a good choice. <laughs> it almost makes me, you know, foolproof, you know. <laughs> Ain't no doubt. All right, thanks. Thank you very much.